So in the previous video, I proved both of these statements, and that was an extension. Okay. Um, now within um, the proof of this one here, var of x plus y equals var of x plus var of y, I stated without proof uh, that these two facts were true. Okay. Now really, we need to be able to prove those as well uh, in order to do that proof. Now, this is an extension video as well, so you wouldn't be expected to uh, replicate this in the exam. So this is just for interest's sake, okay? And just to kind of validate a couple of the steps that I used in that proof. So first of all, prove um, the expected value of ax, so where a is a constant multiplier, is equal to a times e of x. Well, this one's very quick, really. Um, the expected value of a times x would just be, well, the a value is being multiplied by each of the r values that are in your table. So if you had uh, r and probably have x being equal to r, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying a by each of the values that I've got in there. So essentially, I would have the summation of a times each of the r values and then in order to work out the, uh, so I'd have a times whatever that is, a times whatever that is, a times whatever that is, and then I'd multiply each of those by their respective probabilities, and then I'd add them all together, and that would be the expected value of ax. But we know from summations that I can just pull a outside of that summation because it's just a constant multiplier. So I would get this, and of course that is just a times e of x. So the first one is quite easy to prove. The second one, really you need to look back at the table that I draw. I'm not going to draw it out again, okay? Um, but that's what I'll utilise. So essentially what you would have is you would have the um, each of your um, x's, okay, each of your xi's times each of your yj's, okay, they would be multiplied together and each one of those needs to be multiplied by the probability of xi and yj happening. So this if I add them all together, and remember, because I've got i and j, I'm going to have to have double summations. So this is e of x, y. Now, if x and y are independent, then the probability of x, i, y, j, of both x, i and y, j happening, We've learned that from first year A-level maths. If you want the probability of xi and yj happening, that's their intersection. And if they are independent, then that is the same as multiplying the probability of xi by the probability of yj. That is the independence thing coming in. And that is what the proof of this relied on. And hence, that statement is only true when x and y are independent. Now, we haven't quite proved it yet. So anything that's to do with an i can come out and join the summation that has the i on it. So i, x, i, and the probability of x, i. And then I can have the summation of the j's, so y, j, times the property of yj. And of course here, this is the probability of each of the xi's, the r's, times by the respective probabilities. This is e of x. And that is e of y. And so that is the proof that allows that statement to work that I used in the previous video.